Have you ever thought about the little creatures that tend to the garden while we gardeners take a rest? There's microorganisms working the soil, and there's beneficial insects taking care of the pests, and the favorite, pollinators. I'm gonna tell you about a pollinator that is lesser known, but extremely beneficial to the garden, native bees. Native bees are different than the honeybees you might be familiar with. For one thing, they don't make honey, most species are solitary, which means they don't nest together in groups, but they nest on their own. And also, this means they aren't very aggressive, which means they're less likely to sting you. But that's not the best news. The best news is that they are extremely efficient pollinators and can sometimes pollinate up to 100 times better than the honeybee. There are thousands of species in North America. Some of them are carpenter bees, leaf cutter bees, and mason bees. In our garden, we're working on making a habitat that attracts mason bees, as well as other hole nesting bees. It's really pretty simple. So if you're looking for a bumper crop on your fruit trees or your vegetables this year, let me show you how you can invite mason bees and other hole nesting bees into your garden. Native bees want what we all want, a garden bursting with flowers. Mason bees in particular like spring flowers, so having flowering fruit trees, shrubs, and spring bulbs is really important for them. They fly usually less than a mile to find their food sources, so it's helpful to plant things close to their home and also close together so that they're easier to find. Also, if you use pesticides, be careful because they can be deadly to mason bees as well as to the pests you're trying to get rid of, so avoid using them. Those dandelions that pop up in spring, you might want to keep those around. Mason bees like to use them as a food source. They are also looking for a place to nest. Most native bees nest in the ground, but mason bees and a few others make their nests in holes. In the wild, they might find an abandoned insect hole to make their nest, but you can also purchase one. Or, like we did here, you can make one on your own. This is the bee house we made. Yours doesn't have to look exactly like this. You can use your creativity to upcycle any items you have around your house. We made ours out of reclaimed barn wood. These tubes are the main ingredient. This is where the female bee will make her nest. These tubes are made out of natural reed and cardboard. They come in a variety of sizes to attract different types of bees. This eight millimeter size is the perfect size for a mason bee. Don't try to substitute plastic drinking straws or bamboo because they don't breathe and they can cause fungal diseases for the baby bees. This might sound crazy, but the length also matters. They need to be six inches long. This is the proper length to make sure the female bee lays the right ratio of male to female eggs. Here is what else you need to keep them safe. Make sure that what you choose to upcycle doesn't contain or used to contain any harmful chemicals. You want the house to protect the tubes from the elements. We built ours eight inches deep so that there's a two inch overhang to protect the tubes. We used about 100 tubes in this house. That's about all you'll need for a regular sized garden. You'll notice there's also some sticks stuck in here. They look good, and they also provide some landmarks to help the bees find their nest. Where's the best place to hang your bee house? Hang them where they'll get some morning sun and some afternoon shade. Bees are cold-blooded, so they need the sun in the morning to help them warm up and get going. Placing the house on the wall of a shed, a fence, or even a hedge can block the cold north winds and keep it three feet off the ground so it's less accessible to predators such as ants. Finally, in order for the female mason bee to make this house her home, she needs a source of mud. Make sure you have a small muddy area nearby. That way she can use the mud to make walls in between each of her eggs in her nesting tube. It's the busy bees who take care of the rest. Hi, I'm Kristen with Garden Gate Magazine. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to subscribe to Garden Gate Magazine's YouTube channel. There you'll find tips, design ideas, and how-to help for gardeners just like you. Click the bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.